Join UF Hall of Famer and 14-year NFL vet Shane Matthews every weekday as he brings you all you need to know about your Florida team, including news, analysis, and opinion with some of the biggest names in sports. Find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Or watch us live at 8 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Good morning. It's a live edition of Pod Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. It is Thursday. That means we have Brent Beard, our college football analyst, uh, joining the program. Uh, first, if you missed it last night, Gator Baseball goes down to the Golden Knights of UCF in a midweek matchup. Uh, not surprised. That happens a lot. Um, and then Lady Gator Basketball. Uh, won yesterday in the SEC tournament. They played Vanderbilt, I think, this evening. Um, let's go to the Titan MR hotline now. We're joined by our college football analyst and Heisman Trophy voter, Brent Beer. Good morning, Brent. How you doing? Shane, doing okay. We're glad that uh, more teams are on the field, and we'll have more that will come on the field next week. So it's nice to be able to talk about something that actually is happening on the field. Yeah, uh, a, lot, a couple teams in the SEC started spring ball last week. Alabama, I think, started on Monday. Gators crank up today. Um, anybody I leave out there? Uh, you, we have got uh, Missouri and Auburn started last week. LSU right. started Tuesday. Uh, and along with Florida, Arkansas starts today, too. Yeah. All right. So uh, a lot of things are happening in college football, if people are not aware of it, some rule changes uh, some that I think are great. One that's interesting to me is uh, regarding when guys, you know, these fast tempo teams, you get the fake injuries. So correct me if I'm all wrong, Brent. Has this been passed or is it an idea? And if if Brent Beard is playing linebacker and you go down with an injury, you cannot go back in the game until the next possession. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, the they're still trying to uh, – I think this is more proposal uh, than than it being done uh, at this point. They they end up having to run all these things through the appropriate committees, uh, and then they uh, kind of rubber stamp them at some point. You've got that that are going on right now uh, with the, um, uh, the, the communication and the helmets – which, frankly, is something they should have had years ago. Now you've got this two-minute warning thing. Um, I'm not. I, I'm not quite sure we need that uh, in college football, but that looks like that's what's coming uh, during this time too. Um, and another one. I, I'm the um, is a 15-yard horse collar tackle penalty within the tackle box. That's one that. Frankly, really haven't been talked about very much, but that can make a big difference in the game. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll keep an eye on that. But yes, there are a lot of things going on uh, behind the scenes that don't get a lot of publicity uh, necessarily. Uh, and obviously, another one with that would be the uh, early signing period, uh, which uh, is an is another proposal. I think this will. Uh, get done, and it frankly needs to get done. Uh, with, it, this means that the early signing period will move up to the Wednesday before the conference championship game. It'll be three days. Uh, it's been approved by uh, one committee. Now, there's also, uh, you remember they wanted to, they proposed three different times. One being uh, uh, in the summer, which has been, uh, they, they're waiting on that one uh, until later on in the year uh, to, to make a decision with that. Uh, the one we just said uh, in early December, I think, is going through. <clears throat> and then you've got the normal one in February that's coming up. We'll keep our, uh, uh, our eye on that. Uh, as a matter of fact, the... Um, uh, the, the committee that's supposed to sign off on all this 
will vote next week on, on this idea. Uh, but there's still debate if the June uh, situation will work out. So if all that if all that makes sense, uh, that's kind of going down now. Uh, to, to the point you you made a minute ago, the football rules committee discussed faking injuries. Um, a timeout can get a player back on the field, but I'm not sure a coach wants to use a timeout necessarily in order to do that, uh, unless that's a player you, that you really need. So, uh, and another thing that's going on, transfers will now be able to sign a national letter of intent starting this December. Schools have wanted this because when you transfer, they don't have anything that binds them to a commitment. So <clears throat> I hope that that wasn't too much at one time, but that's kind of what's going on. Yeah, I want to get touch on a few things real quick. Um, the helmet communication, as you mentioned, is something they've needed for, for years. I'm pretty sure it has been passed. I don't know if it's going conference to conference, Brent, because I know it's been passed in the ACC. I do some stuff with the Florida State Equipment staff for work. Mm -hmm. I know that they're – I'm pretty sure it passed in the ACC. Is is this conference to conference, or is it going to be nationwide now in college football? No, no. this could be nationwide okay. uh, once that goes. And, and frankly, uh, or at least the opportunity to be able to do it. Uh, I mean, there may be some schools who say they can't afford it, but, I mean, the reality is – uh, that this may be a thing where you can't afford not to do it at some point. So uh, if the technology is there, go ahead and use it. Yeah, and then the other thing are the tablets that, for some reason, I've never understood why college football never adopted that. The NFL has the tablets on the sideline. They have the tablets upstairs yes. where you right. can see plays, you can discuss. It's a lot easier to discuss with kids. This is what they're doing to us. These are the adjustments we have to make. I mean, high school even has that through huddle. Yeah, um, right. So I know these are proposals. I'm just curious when they're going to be uh, legit rules because the tablet, the uh, helmet communication, to me, are imperative to have this year. Yeah, I agree. Now, I don't know. What, you may be able to answer this. Um, teams can use or could use 18 tablets between mm -hmm. the coaching booth, sideline, and locker room, <clears throat> that may have to do with the number of, uh, of people on staff. You can help me with that. But uh, that, that that's what they're looking at is 18. Well, 18 is a lot. Um, but it's probably, as you said, for three or four coaches in the booth, uh, uh, you know, all your assistant coaches to have one on the sideline and then players to be able to share a couple of tablets. So that excites me. Um, I think it's something that is definitely needed in the college game. I've never understood why they haven't. And um, now my question is, you know, in the NFL, there's still pictures. You know, when I played, they actually had like cameras at the top of the stadium taking pictures. Right. And they'd have this kid after every series would have to run them down and put them in this notebook for you to look at on the sideline. But they yeah. were all still photos. You know, in, in high school, you can use the – live updated huddle and you can go back and forth and yeah. uh as the plays are being played right then so i don't i don't know enough about that i need to i'm gonna look into that because i think it's very very interesting uh, christopher says on youtube brought to you by quality plumbing so you're saying shane whether the, the player is faking the injury or not he will have to sit out in the next series he has to sit out that series so like I said, if Brent Beard, if, if I'm on offense and we're driving going 100 miles an hour, Brent's their star linebacker, he goes down with a fake cramp or whatever. Reg well, regardless, if he if you break your leg uh, or you are severely injured or you're not, you cannot come back into that series uh, until the ball is punted, kicked, or whatever. You could come back the next series, but you can't come in in that series unless the team calls timeout. They waste the timeout to get you back in. Right. That's the right. proposal. I like it. I do like that. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense, yes. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, Robert on YouTube brought to you by Quality Plumbing wants me to ask Brent what he thinks about college athletes unionizing. Well, Dartmouth voted yesterday uh, to do that. This is not going to happen overnight. 
it's still going to it, it take a little while to be able to do. I think they will look and see what what that's going. Look, I I, I do think this is coming. It's just a matter of time. I do think we're going to have whether it be good or bad or neutral, uh, that we're going to have contracts and we're going to have revenue sharing at some point. I mean, it is going to be NFL light uh, that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, but, I mean, if that gives the game some structure um, and some guardrails, which it badly needs, uh, that very well may uh, be coming down the pike. So, um, I, you know, and there's still just a lot about that that we don't we we don't know. We haven't had it yet. What are the um, uh, you know unintended consequences to it? Uh, but uh, we'll we'll see where that goes. Um, I mean, we've had you remember Northwestern trying to do this several years ago, and it and it really never came to fruition at all. So we'll see kind of where. Uh, the Dartmouth decision, uh, how that influences uh, other uh, other sports and other teams to do that. Yeah, Daryl says on YouTube, brought to you by Quad Plum, they even use drones in high school. They do live drones just hovering over, Good point. right over yeah. the center, right over the yeah. center during the game. It's nuts. And Natasha says on Facebook Live, brought to you by Mel Law. Can you imagine if Spurrier had a tablet? That would have flown rather <laughs> than the visor, no doubt. <laughs> There is no doubt about that. That's really funny. <laughs> yep. He would have been slinging that joker. Sure uh, would that would SEC media days have been announced. It's going to be in Dallas for the first time. Um, want to run through that for us? Yeah. Um, the uh, It is the Monday, July the 15th through Thursday, July the 18th, four days, uh, which is what it was last year. Uh, just let folks know. Brian Kelly is your first coach on Monday. Kirby Smart is on Tuesday. Taylor DeBoer of Alabama and Billy Napier are on Wednesday. Uh, and then Thursday, uh, Mike Elko uh, will be there. Hugh Free, Sam Pittman, Mark Stoops, to give you kind of a little um, uh, look at it. Now, one thing that's really good is um, uh, that – uh, they but now the ACC is July 22nd to 25th, which is not the same week, obviously, of the SEC. The ACC, for whatever reason, for years had their <clears throat> media day same week or at least overlapped the SEC. I'm glad they're off of that now. And by the way, the Big Ten is July 23rd, 24th, and 25th. They've actually got three days. They used to do uh, two, but now, <laughs> but now there are three. Hey Shane, I mean facetious, but I'm really not. When these when these conferences go to about what twenty five to thirty teams, how many how many days is media days going to be then? Yeah, it'll be a a very long week at least. Um, we're speaking with Brent Beard here on the Titan and More Highline, courtesy of Duffield Home Improvements. Brent, uh, some of the top portal quarterbacks are getting um, getting cranked up at their new spots this yeah. spring. Yes, absolutely. Um, Kyle McCord of Ohio State is going to Syracuse. Will Howard of Kansas State is going to Ohio State. Riley Leonard, folks remember that um, he was at Duke, now he's at Notre Dame. Dylan Gabriel is Oklahoma to Oregon. Ham Ward is Washington State to Miami. And believe me, that is a big deal in Coral Gables right now. Blake Murphy is from Texas to Duke. Julian Singh is from Alabama to Ohio State. Will Rogers went from Mississippi State to Washington State. Tyler Van Dyke went from Miami and uh, to Wisconsin. And Grady McCall from Coastal Carolina to NC State. So... We need a roster to keep up, don't we, Shane? But that's some of the uh, uh, the, the, the bigger name transfers and where they went. Yeah, for sure. You know, the one that uh, – Dylan Gabriel has been playing college football forever. This is his uh, <laughs> third school in the last yeah. three years um, mm -hmm. at Oregon. It's interesting that Dante Moore, who was a highly rec recruited kid, is going to Oregon too. I guess he's going to – he realized he won't play this year. He'll behind, uh, be behind um, – 
Dylan Gabriel. Uh, Greg says define series. I, I, I guess Greg is asking about the injury deal. So a series is when one team has a pos possession of the football. You know, so if, if Brent gets hurt or fakes an injury and I throw an interception, that series is over. So he can go back immediately the next series. But if it's right. like a 12 play drive, he's out the whole time uh, unless they call a timeout. Uh, Dan says if you break a tablet, you're down to 17. Do you, do you get a new one or do they replace it? That's a good question because I'm telling you right now. Those, they'll, they'll probably – they'll have people like in the NFL, they're going to have to. Uh, and this may have something to do with the cost as well. They're going to have to have some people on the sideline, and I don't know if they're going to be employed by each school or if they're going to be, you know, whether it's an SEC uh, affiliate person who is going to be in charge of that technology, the tablets and the headsets. Because I can't tell you how many times headsets uh, get screwed up and they always have somebody there uh, trying to fix it. And a lot of times, if your headsets go out, they have to let the officials know because then the other team can't use their headsets. So it well, will be and, uh, somewhat and interesting. And one more thing to that, uh, they will probably have some kind of a uh, situation where you are charging multiple headsets during the yeah. game. Don't you think, Shane? Uh, yeah. Just in case, uh, yeah, one or two break, you got to replace them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Greg's question is, if you get a first down, is that the end of the series? No. Series is when it's a change of possession. Rose Ogre State Farm Office is a team of dedicated insurance professionals ready to have life go right with the right insurance options for you and your family. Visit ogreinsurance.com. Give them a call at 352-240-1779. Let's get a couple of texts here before we move around the SEC, Brent. Uh, we got a bunch of them. I'll pick and choose a few here. Uh, this one is from Eric in Tampa. It says, QB, nice interviews with Gator legend Brandon Spikes and dog ex-coach Mark Rick. I can never like Rick as a cane, no puppy. But the more I hear the stories, the more I respect him. Yeah, he's a uh, – Brent, you probably know a little bit about Mark Rick. Uh, I did a little interview with him at Coach Spurrier's award. He was the, the legend award winner. Just a first-class guy. He is. He is. My heart goes out to him and his family. I mean, he's got Parkinson's disease now, and uh, that's very difficult um, to deal with. My dad had it, um, and I remember the tremors and all that he went through. But Mark is beloved um, in a lot of places. I, I mean, look, it, it, let's be honest. He didn't win championships like they wanted him to at Georgia. But, I mean, his overall record was better than, than most coaches. I went to Miami and, and just decided that um, – uh, and he's now on the, a the ACC network doing mm -hmm. a lot of work for them. But, yes, uh, and I'm, I'm glad he was there. I, I'm, I'm glad you had a chance to spend a little time with him. Yeah, you know, he recruited me when he was at Florida State, so it was good well, to see him again. Uh, here's a text from an anonymous text. It says, Gator baseball won't be ranked by the end of the month. Pitching is dreadful. No World Series run this year. These midweek games do matter. Awful game last night. Oh, boy. <laughs> he, I, I'm have to, no negativity. I mean, it is midweek. I could care less about midweek. Once we get into right. SEC play, that's all right. that matters. Um, another text from an anonymous texter. Good morning, Shane. So moving up early signing, why don't we just have an – Option on eighth graders. Wow, where does it stop? <laughs> That's Brett and Jacks. So it's a good point. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. Uh, and Andy says, does Brandon Spikes have coaching aspirations once he graduates? You know, that's a great question. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, some people just like I think Brandon right now. He loves being around the team. Is he kind of a off the field coach mentor? Yes, uh, but some guys just like that role because he doesn't have to go to coaches meetings. He doesn't. He can go home when practice is over, um, but he likes to be a part of a team, and, and having guys like him around is definitely a good thing. Sure. Um, all right, Brent. SEC, as we said, a bunch of people cranked it up, but let's start with Alabama. Um, just weird seeing somebody at the podium with their the Coke bottle, no That's straw true. hat, yeah. wearing a. Uh, a, a polo with an A on it, and it ain't Nick Saban. It looked very strange when Kalen DeBoer went to the podium. Yep, it did, no doubt. But they're off and running. 
trying to figure out um, uh, a lot of things, but I mean, they've still got a lot of talent. Keon Keeley, one of their better recruits, has made a position change. He's going from outside linebacker to uh, defensive end. Uh, I think what also was different a little bit is you're seeing more uh, uh, the coordinators or uh, in press conferences more than they were under Nick Saban. Uh, in the media is having more access. Uh, they're actually going to have a certain amount of practices where they can do some filming and, and, and so forth. So that's kind of unusual, but uh, or, 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 or maybe just say it's different than what it was under Nick Saban. Now, I'll be brief on this, but Nick Saban had a big interview with Chris Lowe that came out yesterday, and he talked about some of the reasons why he retired. Um, now, he was disappointed, as he said, after the Rose Bowl loss and how some of the players uh, acted uh, during that time, saying that's not who we are. Um, also, he met with the players. This won't surprise anybody. This is what we are right now. But he thought next year could be a really good team. But um, he said that the, the majority of the players that he talked to, they like all coaches, they have exit interviews after the season uh, to talk about where they're going and what they need to work on for next season. And the reality was um, that the, the two main questions he got were, was, well, Coach, am I sure to start next year? And how much money are you going to pay me? So that was quite, uh, I think, uh, revealing to him and, and kind of made him think about, do I really want to stay in this uh, with all this that's going on? The other thing that were, was really fascinating that came out of this report was – that uh, that Alabama really was in some serious talks also with Mike Norvell of Florida State, and obviously he stayed. He got a raise, and uh, good for him. Uh, but according to to the report, if Norvell had left for Alabama, Lane Kiffin would have been FSU's prime candidate, as we see the dominoes go here. So uh, I won't belabor the point too much more here, but I just wanted to – throw that out. I don't know if you saw it, Shane, but that was a very interesting interview, uh, an article by Chris Lowe. Yeah, I, I did see that, but I, I, I highly doubt that Lane would leave Ole Miss to go to Florida State. That's just my gut feeling. If that were, if that was going to happen, I just, now ACC, he had a better chance of winning there, but he's making right. a lot of money in Oxford and people yeah. are very happy with him there. So, uh, Arkansas, obviously, uh, Sam Pittman's still the head coach, but they bring back Bobby Petrino. What's going on with spring ball there? Have they started? Uh, yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, they start today. Oh, today. Uh, that, that, that's a great thing. Great thing about doing these things live. Uh, is this, Yes, it's literally today. Um, so, but, but, but people may miss this. Petrino left A&M uh, where he was the OC there under Jimbo. Um, and uh, he is back in Arkansas. We'll give him credit for that. They have they have a transfer. I'm curious if you're if you've seen this kid much. Boise State quarterback transfer Talon Green uh, is one of four expected transfer starters um, for the uh, for the Hogs. So we will uh, we'll see where that goes. Rocket Sanders, by the way. Uh, and it's easy to forget this, these things, but Rocket Sanders ended up at South Carolina, so that's going to be a real plus for South Carolina when he, uh, uh, when the season begins. Live a healthier lifestyle with our bold, flavorful smoothies and our amazing food. Tropical smoothie. When you eat better, you feel better. we got Brent Beard on the Titan Number Hotline. Don't forget tomorrow after JC, we'll have Nate Barbera, CEO, and Freddie Weeby, Director of Revenue from Florida Victorious, will be joining the program, so get your questions in comments, ready to roll. Uh, Auburn, uh, a lot of changes going on on the Plains. Obviously, Hugh Freeze will be calling the plays. Um, they got quarterback problems. I don't know who their quarterback's going to be, but what's going on, on in, in Auburn? Well, Patrick Thorne is going to be the quarterback for now. 
Uh, we'll see how it goes during the spring. Um, the, the big thing with Auburn is uh, they've got some better players at wide receiver. Cam Coleman is one of those guys they're really excited about. One of these younger players, they've still got a lot of work to do defensively. Uh, remember, they hired D.J. Durkin to run the defense. Charles Kelly, who was at Florida State in Colorado, uh, is going to be on that staff, too. Um, but as Shane said, uh, Hugh Freeze will be calling the plays, particularly after throwing his offensive staff under the bus after the bowl game when he was out recruiting. Um, but and Jar- I think I mentioned Jarquez Hunter comes back. Uh, and running back, so that will help them a lot, too. Yep. Uh, Mark uh, asked on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing, what happened to Jimbo? Jimbo got fired. Jimbo's on an island somewhere that he purchased, probably, uh, yes, with all the money probably. they gave him. Yeah, so uh, the Gators start today. Uh, the biggest thing, I think, coming out of spring ball, there, there's a lot of Gators that are going to participate lightly in spring practice, uh, but due to injuries from last year, won't be going full speed and probably not really any contact. Yeah. Offensive tackle Austin Barber. Remember, he missed the, the, the final two games of the season. Upper body injury. No sur- no surgery, but he probably won't be doing that much. And, and you've got a lot of guys who are uh, uh, hopefully close to uh, coming back or, or certainly in the process. Shamir James, dislocated kneecap. Uh, Zipper, the torn ACL, the tight end. Hopefully he'll be close. Cam Carroll, the running back, uh, torn ACL. Justice Boone, same thing. Edge rusher, Jack Pyburn, torn ACL. Now, you can certainly help us with this, but uh, it, it look, it takes a while for these ACLs. Medically, uh, you can really get back to going pretty quickly. Uh, but there's still the psychological impact of it. Guys who've had ACLs have told me for a long time that, that they were not really right mentally in, in, until a year afterwards. So um, that's something we need to keep in mind. Uh, but hopefully these guys will be back on the field or, or, or at least uh, that they'll be doing some light workouts during the spring. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Joseph says on Facebook Live, brought to you by Mel, I can't believe the chosen stop child is giving up his number to the freshman. I don't even know what you're talking about, Joseph. Let us know what all that means. Uh, Georgia, what's going on up in Athens? I know they had a ton of coaching changes. Uh, they had the kids leaving the transfer. They picked up a few. What's going on in Athens? Yeah, uh, uh, most recently, Chan Lindbergh, an offensive lineman, has entered the transfer portal as a grand transfer, and again, pretty much grand transfers can come and go as they please, and they should because they tra- they graduated. So we'll, we'll see where he goes, but he is the 20th scholarship player from Georgia to enter the transfer portal. So look, Georgia, even as good as they are now, they have folks transfer out too because they don't have the playing time, uh, but frankly, that they want and need. Carson Beck obviously comes back. They've had a lot of transition uh, with the wide receivers. Uh, also, now they've still got a lot of guys coming back. Dominic Lovett, who transferred from Missouri. Dylan Bell, Ray Ray Thomas, Aaron Smith, Anthony Evans. So they'll still be very good um, at wide receiver. Uh, but, but Georgia, like everybody else, has had a lot of change on their roster. Uh, so the number deal, I, I guess – Montreal gave up number two to Lagway. I, I can, I would put money on it that he had to pay a lot of money for it because this is like <laughs> NFL. Now. Yeah, that's what happens mm-hmm. when you want a number in the NFL. And Lagway has a lot of money, so yeah. whatever Montreal wanted for it, he'll probably publicly say he gave it to him. But I, I I'll, I'll never believe that. Um, <laughs> I'll never believe it at all. Uh, Kentucky, you know Brock Vandergriff, who is highly touted coming out of high school, really has never played at all for Georgia. He's going to be their quarterback, supposedly. Right, uh, right. Time will tell, but mm-hmm. I don't know why he went to Kentucky. Their offense is not great, but, but what, what's going on in Lexington? Well, uh, I mean, that's basically the main thing. 
uh, and we'll see how Vandergriff does. We don't know because he's never played much. Ray Davis obviously is gone, um, so that certainly helps. Um, gosh, Mark Stoops has been at Kentucky for 11 years. They're spru- sprucing up the stadium a little bit. They're improving the lighting and the, the video boards and things of that nature. So, uh, the uh, uh, and, and again, I give Stoops a lot of credit. They, but before it's over, they'll probably put a statue up for him uh, mm-hmm. as far as his longevity and what he's been able to accomplish. So they are looking for a better year than your uh, than the usual seven and five. Yeah, for sure. Richard says he went to. I guess Montreal's wearing number one. He says that's an honor. I, I don't. I disagree with that. I, I, the fans think it's an honor, but uh, maybe Montreal wanted it. But I know a ton of players that have a number and they will not wear number one because some people think it's an honor. I, I just, I don't understand that whole concept. Um, so anyway, um, LSU, mm-hmm. obviously they lose the Heisman trophy winner. Uh, but Garrett Nussmeyer's played a lot of football. He's a good player. It's a different type of course for back. Uh, I don't think LSU will be as explosive on offense due to his lack of mobility. Uh, but LSU still expecting to have a pretty good year. Well, here's what's different in LSU is they have, and this is a smart move by Brian Kelly, they're beefing up their defense. Their defense, as Shane and I thought last year, repeatedly was abysmal. Uh, now they had players, but they had injuries, and, and it just didn't work. But they made a lot of changes. Corey Raymond ended up at LSU from Florida, Blake Baker went from Missouri uh, to uh, LSU, uh, and they've got Bo Davis went from Texas to LSU. So that's a really good defensive staff. Well, we, we will see where that goes. But and, and to your point, Shane, they may be a tick um, uh, not as effective offensively, but defensively, I think they'll be better, and in the, in the, that's their goal for this year. Yeah, uh, on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing. Rhode Island Gator says, if Jimbo comes back, does he forfeit the buy? No. His buy, he's been paid. Uh, correct oh, yes. me if I'm wrong there, Brent. If he goes and oh, coaches right. yes. if he goes yes. and coaches at Valdosta State or wherever, um, no, A&M is paying him whatever it was, 70-something million. Yes. So, uh, Mississippi State. You know, Jeff uh, Levy is cranking up. He's got a transfer quarterback who's very athletic, really good player, Blake Shapen yes. uh, from Baylor. Yes, um, right. What, what are you hearing out of Stark Vegas? Shapen threw for 5,000 yards uh, at, at this point in his career. He had a knee injury last year, <clears throat> and that hurt. Now, Chris Parson is a four-star quarterback that is expected to push him uh, for some reps. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see, uh, frankly, how Levy does uh, uh, with this. Now, here's something that's kind of unusual. Uh, let me dovetail the two things together here. Former Mississippi State quarterback, uh, head coach, Zach Arnett, has actually gone to Ole Miss, and he is a part of a, their defensive staff uh, as an analyst. Uh, so, I mean, that raises a few eyebrows, I'm sure. But, look, everybody knows everybody in the coaching ranks. Shane can talk about that. Um, but uh, so that that's where he's ended up. Hopefully he'll be able to restart his career. Uh, but, but I will tell you, Zach Arnett's a very good defensive coach. So, uh, so hopefully things will get better for him while he's at Ole Miss. Yeah, speaking of Ole Miss, uh, we all know that Lane has done – a tremendous job. I, I want to say he had he got was it eighteen kids out of the transfer portal this year. Uh, I, I think it's actually seventeen, but you're right 17? on it. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jackson Dart is still the starter now. Now the the amusing thing last week was Jackson Dart got a NIL with a private jet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of people have talked about that one a little bit. But look, that this Ole Miss team is very good. Um, uh, I mean, they um, uh, th- they have really made a lot of, as we said, transfer. Uh, but they will be in the top ten uh, with all the magazines and the polls that come out in the next few weeks. 
Well, this is the first here we now have to talk about the Oklahoma Sooners, Brent. What's going on in Norman? <laughs> yeah, Jackson Arnold uh, is their quarterback, first-year quarterback. They like him, uh, but they know there's going to be a real transition uh, with the schedule. Uh, also, they've got home games in Alabama and Tennessee. Uh, so that And they start Monday, as a matter of fact. Brent Venables... Uh, had a press conference, and during the press conference, uh, he had some good news. He announced that yeah, I understand his wife had cancer, and she is in remission now, so they were very glad to announce that. But uh, there will be a lot of adjustment for uh, Oklahoma. Now, again, officially Oklahoma and Texas will join the league in a, in a few weeks. Uh, they've got an official date for that and, and so forth. Uh, and and from, they're not quite official yet, but that's coming. Uh, Carolina, uh, I tell you what, Shane Beamer, he worries about what people say in the media a lot. I don't know if people he saw does, that. Don't he? Yeah. James Coley left him to go to Georgia. He was not happy with that. He did, however, bring in back Sean Elliott, who was uh, the former head coach at Georgia State University, did a good job right. there, but he was also with Coach Spurrier when Coach Spurrier was there. I think that's a tremendous hire for him. Yeah, uh, and there there was much said about that, but then they were back together again. New running back coach Markwell Blackwell, special teams coordinator Joe DeCamillis. Uh, and I mentioned a few minutes ago, Rocket Sanders has gone from Arkansas to South Carolina. Uh, they're hoping that he will uh, lose a little bit of weight. That may he may be a little faster by doing that. But well, but look, when Rocket Sanders is healthy. No question, he is easily one of the better banks in the entire league. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Uh, what's going on on Rocky Top? Well, they are uh, – they'll be starting in a uh, a few days. They've got to replace a lot of players uh, in their uh, secondary uh, with that. They do have a four-star transfer from Oregon State, Jermon McCoy, uh, that they they are excited about. Um, Ohio State transfer Andre Turrentine will get a look at one of the safety spots. Uh, so they're excited about that. But it's all about Nico, Shane. Mm -hmm. Nico Lamaliva, and I'll get that pronunciation right when, before, the, <laughs> before the season starts, but there's a lot of excitement about him. Yeah. The Texas Longhorns are on the broadcast now. Um, they have a good football team, and they got a lot of dudes coming back. They do. Quinn Ewers, a quarterback, is the main one uh, that they're certainly excited about. I've already seen projections of Texas going eleven and one or seven and one in the uh, uh, in the conference. Now they've got a lot of transfers. Xavier Worthy uh, set the combine speed record over the weekend. Uh, but and they've got uh, the transfers include Isaiah Bond and Amari Niblick from Alabama, Silas Bolden from Oregon State, uh, who is supposed to be uh, one of the better players too. Uh, but you're right, Shane. This is a uh, this is a really good Texas team. People may not realize, but one of the bigger games of the year in September is Texas goes to Michigan. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch that. And the Michigan's got a lot of um, the people to replace. Uh, J.J. McCarthy's gone. Corum's gone. Uh, but that will be the headliner or one of them in September. Yeah, Andy's question for you, Brent, on Facebook Live brought to you by Mel Law. What percentage of snaps will Arch Manning get this season? I will say he will get none unless a blowout or an injury. Uh, yeah, Shane's right on that. I mean, that's a good question. Um as a matter of fact, I believe, if, if I remember this right, that Arch is not going to participate in the, um, uh, it, you know, they got the new college football, yeah. uh, the video game, for lack of a better word, uh, is back, and I don't think he's going to m m participate in that, which is, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you, if you do, you get $600 and a copy of the game, he does not uh, see, need 
<laughs> no, he doesn't, does he, Shane? That's a great point. Uh, and look, uh, I mean, uh, we think he's a good quarterback. We haven't really seen him on the field, uh, but Shane's right. Now, this is Ewers' uh, team at this point. And, 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 and for now, uh, what I understand, Arch is happy to, you know, to earn his stripes and work his way up the ladder. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, Michael says on Facebook Live brought to you by, excuse me, on quality, uh, YouTube brought to you by Quality Plumbing. The only honor of giving up a number was when Steve Spurrier gave up his number, 11. Brought it out of retirement for Ben Hanks, yeah. And then when Coach was coaching here, he always gave that number to a kid who kind of overcame a lot of obstacles in his life. I think it went from Hanks to Thad Bullard, and I don't remember who after that. Um, Brent, before we get you out of here, uh, ACC, what can you tell me what's going on in Tallahassee? Yeah, be glad to. Uh, they're going to be starting next week. But by the way, Clemson's already started, uh, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on them uh, too. Um, I, look, this still a good team is coming back. Um, I mean, I, I'll throw out some names here: Mar- uh, Marvin Jones Jr. Um, uh, uh, he's six five, two fifty, so they obviously really like what he's going to do, that they think this is going to be a good defense. I've had some good transfers. Malik Benson at wide receiver comes in from Alabama. Earl Little Jr. comes in from Alabama. Rodell Williams comes in from Alabama. You can kind of see a uh, tr- a trend here. Uh, DJ Ungle is a quarterback. Uh, I'll still be very interested to see uh, how that one goes. Also, re- remember, Florida State opens the season in Ireland playing Georgia Tech, so they're in in the midst of um, selling tickets for that right now. Miami is also going on. Uh, they have started spring practice. Their offense looks better because they've got a better quarterback, Cam Ward. Xavier Restapro is one of their better wide receivers. He's having a good spring um, so far, so they like what they see. Uh, with, with this, um, uh, but them being solidified at quarterback is going to help them tremendously. I mean, they do have some good players. Mark Fletcher, running back, was one of the better freshmen in the in the uh, uh, SEC last year, uh, ACC last year. Shannon Dawson and Lon Tegidry, both those guys come back as coordinators, so that's going to help them too. So a lot more we could say, but I know we're short on time, but. Uh, just a little bit more about we wanted to add about Florida State, Miami. Yep, for sure. Brent, great stuff as always, my man. Appreciate your time, and we'll talk to you next week. Good. Look forward to it, pal. Take care. Yeah, that's Brent Beard joining us on the Titan and More Hotline, courtesy of Duffield Home Improvements. And um, Silverback Concrete is a family-led team of heavy concrete specialists that build commercial structures with unrivaled quality. Silverback Concrete, you stand on it, we stand by it. Um, Tommy says here, I think Arch Manning was worried his numbers on the game wouldn't be good. That, that may be the case, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with he doesn't want to sign away his name or rights or whatever for $600. I think that's that's uh, the big issue there uh, with those guys. Um, <clears throat> Joe says, no matter what happens in the future, his kids could play that game one day and play with dad. Crazy not to do it. Yeah, I'm I'm sure eventually he will get his name on there. But uh, the Manning family is pretty smart, and I'm sure his his uh, his dad and their legal system or you know, the people that handle all their business told him this isn't worth signing away for six hundred bucks. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. So, all right, well, that's going to do it. Uh, we're going to take a timeout. We're going to come back. We still have a few more interviews that we're going to run from the Steve Spurrier Coaches Award that that, uh, that Zach, our producer, has done a tremendous job with. Y'all really like these. I uh, hope you've listened to them. And uh, tomorrow, don't forget, we're going to have uh, Freddie Weeby, um, Director of Revenue, and Nate Barbero, the CEO from Florida Victorious, will be joining us uh, right after JC. So make sure you – have your questions and comments ready for those jokers. So have a great day. And um, they're doing a tremendous job and they're trying to get awareness. They got the billboards up, all that stuff. So if you got your questions, comments, shoot them our way. You can give some text on the Titan Amar text line as well. That number is 352 
353-7465. All right, buddy. We'll see y'all later. Have a great day. We want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Meldon Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Dave & Buster's, eat, drink, play, watch. Duffield Home Improvements for your window, siding, and roofing needs. Radware, your local provider of promotional products, uniforms, and apparel. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radware, F45, Quality Plumbing. Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker Sporting Goods, Silver Q Billiards and Sports Bar. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. Pro football legend Emmett Smith understands your joint pain. It does not surprise me that there are a ton of people out there that's in pain. That's why Emmett is such a proponent of QC Kinetics, offering real lasting joint pain relief with non-surgical, all-natural biologic treatments. Whether it's a joint pain, ankle pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, hip pain, any kind of pain, the body eventually will break down when it's under that much stress. That stress can cloud your judgment to the point that you'll just say yes to the scalpel or yes to another prescription of pain pills. But maybe it's time for a second opinion from QC Kinetics. The reason why I would recommend this is because the natural biologics that QC Kinetics is providing you gives your body a chance to naturally heal itself. Restorative regenerative solutions are here. Get lasting relief and live your life. Call QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. That's 352-400-4550. QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. Welcome back to Pod Up with Matthews in the Morning. This is producer Zach Rothrock live from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Shane had a chance to sit down with Arizona quarterback Noah Fafita. He was the recipient of the Freshman of the Year Award at Spurrier's Grid Iron Grill. So here is their exclusive interview. You're listening to Pot Up with Matthews in the Morning, brought to you by Melton Law. We're now joined by the Offensive Freshman of the Year, quarterback Noah Fafita from the University of Arizona. Appreciate you joining us, my man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's uh, it's got to be a pretty cool award here. You know, you probably don't know who Coach Spurrier is. You may know a little bit. Your, your, your former head coach, Jed Fish, I don't you know. Do you know the story how you got into coaching? Yes, sir. You used to leave notes on yes, Coach sir. Spurrier's window when he was a student here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what y'all have done in Arizona. Last couple of years really turned it around, had a tremendous year this year. Just talk about what it meant to be able to turn a program who hadn't had a whole lot of success around as the quarterback. It's been awesome, and I, and I don't really take credit for it. I think it, was, uh, it started at the top of Coach Fish, and he did a great job bringing people in, players, coaches, support staff. Um, so he gets he gets a lot of the credit, but uh, it's been it's been a blessing to be a part of it. Um, being able to go from one and eleven when I wasn't there to five and seven was a big deal, and then uh, having the fourth ten win season in, in program history is a big deal as well. So uh, it's been great to reap the benefits, but we're excited to get back to work and, and build on what we've created. How, how much do you hate Arizona State? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, if I'm being honest, I didn't really grow up. Uh, watching too much Arizona or Arizona State football, so uh, I would be lying if I said you're I, from California, yes, right? Sir. Yeah, you're like me. I grew up in Mississippi, so I, when I came to school here, I didn't really understand what Florida, Georgia yep. was all about. I knew what Ole Miss and, and Mississippi State was about. Yes, sir. So you probably used to USC, UCLA yep. type games, right? So, but as I, as I've been kind of in my second year and being able to play in that game, you could kind of see the hatred between fans and alumni. So it's it's real fun to be a part of. Yeah. So. You're listed in the program at how tall? In the program, 5'11". 5'11". You know, it's interesting because I wanted to talk to you about, because you're not, you know, nowadays they look for these 6'3", 6'4", 240-pound quarterbacks. Yes, sir. You got a little chip on your shoulder, right? Because 
I didn't have a strong arm. There's more to playing quarterback than just size, arm strength, and that kind of stuff. Talk about what you do well. I, I take pride in um, preparation, and that's kind of how my dad raised me. Um, our whole thing in because I was shorter, I had to, I had to make up for my size with um, being able to make quick decisions and making the right decisions. So that's always what I take pride in, meeting with coaches, um, watching more film than anybody else. So that's kind of what I've always taken pride in, and that's kind of why I think I'm able to be to have some of the su success I've had. Do y'all have a lot of kids coming back from last year, Steve? Yes, sir. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm a, I'm a college football junkie. Was it who, your receiver? Yes, sir. Did y'all go to high school together? Yes, sir. Okay, y'all. He's coming back, right? Yes, sir. Okay, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Playing so with we your got high school guy. Our linebacker. Um, he led the Pac-12 in tackles. He's coming back. He played with us in high school, and then uh, our starting tight end this year played with us in high school. So there's four of us. What What was the name of that high school? Uh, Servite High School. Were y'all any good? <laughs> we're okay. We didn't finish. <laughs> we didn't finish the way we wanted, but we were. We had a good senior year. When spring spring ball start for you? I think they just released the first practice date, March 26th. Okay. All right. Good deal. Uh, so back to the size thing. Is there an NFL guy you model yourself after? Like growing Russell, up, Russell growing, Wilson. Yeah, growing up, I was always a Russell Wilson fan. That was the guy I looked up to. Um, but kind of as I got older into high school, uh, I played against Bryce Young my sophomore year. So okay. my eighth grade up until now, I watched a lot of Bryce Young film, try to emulate some of the stuff he does. I don't know if he's any taller than you, quite honestly. <laughs> I think I, I would say we're about the same, yeah. same size. Um, around that size at least. So when you look at next year's schedule, what are some of the games that you're looking forward to? Yeah, so we're, we're moving to the Big 12, so we have a lot of new uh, atmospheres we're looking forward to. Um, we're the UCF Space game, which is going to be fun. I think the game I'm most looking forward to is Utah. Um, I grew up a Utah fan, so being able to to, to go start uh, at Rice Echo Stadium against my dream school, that's that's the one I have circled. So we I, I do the color analysts for our football games, okay. and uh, we played at – uh, that stadium this year yep. to open the season up. It's a cool little stadium. Yes, it was uh, it was a better atmosphere than I anticipated. Not so. as big as the SEC school. No, it's not. But it, it got loud yeah. and it, it was just cool right in next to that mountain. It was yes, sir. It was nice. Um, let's talk about you. Talk about you. You pride yourself in preparation. What are you doing right now after the success that you had as a freshman, getting ready for your sophomore year? It started. I started watching film from last year already, so being able to kind of see um, tendencies I have, seeing, um, trying to find flaws in my game. Uh, I'll just be quite frank. One of my one of my tendencies is drifting in the pocket, so that's something I'm trying to clean up right now. But uh, the new challenge is having a new coaching staff, new offensive coordinator, um, new head coach, all the way down the line. So meeting with them every single day, trying to learn the new terminology, learn the new offense. Um, I think if you're the quarterback, you gotta you gotta know everything more than everybody else. So I'm trying to I'm trying to learn it, make sure that if anybody has questions, I can help them. I want to ask you this because I, I, Jed Fish he ran mostly a West Coast yes, sir. system. Did y'all huddle a lot? I can't remember if y'all huddled or not. Well, here's the reason I ask that, because nowadays, as a former quarterback, you know, you got all the coaches over there doing all the yeah. signals. I always wanted to communicate, even if we were going no huddle back in the day, communicate to my receivers so they heard, they either saw my signal or saw, heard it come out of my, my mouth, because the last thing I want to do is me see a signal, him see the wrong signal, yeah. I throw a curl, he runs and a go goal, route, and six. now we got pick six. Yes, sir. So how did y'all do it last year? We did both. We had different packages. Uh, we huddled. I'd say we huddled a lot more than we did the previous two years. Um, but really, the only huddles we did were game plan plays. Uh, then we had our little tempo packages that we had. But I'm the same way. Every time we got a tempo package and we were on the ball, I made sure everybody oh, was yeah. on the same page. It scares the hell out of me. I'm just like, I don't know how these, these yes, guys sir. do it nowadays. Well, man, we appreciate it. First time you ever been in Gainesville, Florida? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is a pretty cool restaurant this right here. This is a great restaurant. It's a museum of the head ball coach. So, yes, sir. Uh, you know, Jeb, Jeb, um, he ran, he, he wore a visor because of Coach Spurge. You know that? I just found that out today. Yeah. I saw the visors out there, and I, and I asked Coach B if that's why Coach Fish wears it, and he said yes. So. Yes, it is. Well, that's Noah Fafita, the freshman of the year for the uh, Steve Spurrier Award. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you man. for having me. I Good luck it. next year. Thank you so much.